Hey everybody, welcome back to Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. In today's video, we're going to be discussing a medication known as itraconazole. Its brand names would be Sporinox or Omnel. And before I talk about the medication itself, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. Now, during this presentation, we'll discuss the mechanism of action or how this medication works, indications or reasons we would prescribe this medication to a patient, followed by contraindications or reasons we would not be able to prescribe itraconazole. We'll then touch on some examples of dosing and then finish it off with side effects with percentages. I've put together some slides to go over this information. Let's jump right into it. So the first thing to discuss here would be the mechanism of action or how this medication works. So itraconazole acts by inhibiting the fungal P450 dependent enzyme lanosterol 14 alpha demethylase. When this enzyme is inhibited, it blocks the conversion of lanosterol to ergosterol, which disrupts fungal cell membrane synthesis. In terms of indications or reasons we would prescribe this medication to a patient, we may see it used in the treatment of candidiasis of the esophagus, as well, patients with HIV infection-related oropharyngeal candidiasis may use this medication. Patients with onychomycosis due to a dermatophyte may use this medication. Onychomycosis would be a fungal infection of the nail, whether fingernail or toenail. Pulmonary histoplasmosis may be treated with this medication, as well as blastomycosis. With respect to contraindications or reasons we would not be able to prescribe itraconazole to a patient, well, first of all, we wouldn't give this medication to a patient who had a hypersensitivity to itraconazole or to any other component of the formulation. Pregnant women or women contemplating pregnancy should not use this medication. and should also not be used with colchicine, esoterodine, dolophenicin, or telethormycin in patients with renal or hepatic impairment, being kidney or liver impairment. Finally here, this medication should not be used with CYP3A4 substrate medications. Now for some examples of dosing with itraconazole. So in the treatment of candidiasis of the esophagus, using the oral solution, we may see 100 to 200 milligrams swished and swallowed daily for a minimum of three weeks and then for two weeks following symptom resolution. For onychomycosis due to a dermatophyte, the Omnel tablets using for a toenail would be given at a dose of 200 milligrams orally once daily for 12 weeks. If a patient was, however, using Sporinox capsules for a fingernail, they may use 200 milligrams orally twice daily for one week, then would come off the drug for three weeks. They would then repeat 200 milligrams orally twice daily for one week. As with all medications, there are some side effects or adverse reactions that patients may experience while using itraconazole, so go over some of those here now. 4% of patients may experience edema, while 3% may experience hypertension or high blood pressure. Pruritus or itchiness of the skin may happen 3 to 5% of the time, and a rash may happen 3 to 9% of the time. 2 to 4% of patients may experience abdominal pain, and as well, 2 to 4% may experience diarrhea. 3 to 11% may experience nausea. Vomiting may happen 5% of the time. Abnormal liver function tests may happen 3% of the time, and dizziness comes in at 1 to 4%. A headache may happen between 2 and 10% of the time rhinitis up to 9% of the time, and sinusitis may come in at 2 to 7%. Up to 3% of patients may experience fatigue, and 2 to 3% of patients may experience a fever. Now two uh, more rare but serious side effects would be congestive heart failure or pancreatitis. All right, everybody, that's all we're going to talk about today with itraconazole or Sporinox as well as Omnel. As always, I'm very thankful you took the time to come by and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help grow this channel, remember you can like the videos, share the videos, and most importantly subscribe to the YouTube channel. And there's also some links down in the description you can check out as well. And for today, take care.